So I forgot to start the video for YouTube. It's okay, we started okay. now anyways. Okay. So everyone should have one grease tin in front of them. Then you should have ground almond, or as my mom is doing, you can chop your own almond, but make sure that you chop it quite fine. Just quickly, um, the oven temp, is that for fan assisted as well? Fan. That's for fan. That is for fan. fan. 165 fan. fan. Um, and positive imprint is asking, uh, good day from Nigeria. Oh, and what nice. are we baking today? Strawberry cake. So if you look at Bake With Maria's feed, uh, she's, got the, she's got the recipe and the ingredients and everything on her feed. Yeah, two posts back, you'll see it. Right, so we have our ground almond, all pre-scaled, 100 gram. Got caster sugar. You can use granulated if you can't get caster. And we got plain flour. So those are our dry ingredients and a pinch of salt, which has got AVOL in my kitchen. But so you can just add a pinch of salt into your flour. If you don't have a kitchen aid, you're going to do this by hand. But either way, you're going to get your dry ingredients so your flour goes into your medium or kitchen aid bowl. Together with your sugar and your ground almond. So these are all your dry ingredients. Just combine it with a spatula. Make sure that they're lump free. Right. And then over here on my side, I have my cold cubed unsalted butter. If you're using salted butter, don't add that pinch of salt in. Hopefully that's not too late. Uh, but I like to use unsalted butter. Make sure that it's cubed because then it's a bit easier to work with. And now we're going to get our butter into our dry ingredients. This pestle tends to do everything to good tomorrow. All right. So if you're doing this one by hand, you're going to get nice clean hands out. You're going to use the tip of your fingers, so your fingertips, and you're just going to rub the butter into your dry ingredients. You have a KitchenAid, you're going to put on the KitchenAid with your paddle attachment. So basically we're just coating our dry ingredients in the fat. Any questions? So far so good, just give me a thumbs up so I know that all is good. If I need to slow down or repeat anything, just let me know. When you're using the KitchenAid, always start at the slowest setting. And it will go everywhere. If you don't want it to go everywhere, just grab yourself some cling film and cover your machine. The reason it goes everywhere is because the butter is hot, so it just makes the dry ingredients fly everywhere. So, there you go. Question, Marshall. Uh, uh, what's the recipe measurements? I feel like this is the answer you always think, Marshall. It's on the post. It's on the post. It's on the post. It's on the post. Two posts back. Thursday. Let's see. Is it a Thursday? Every Thursday I post what we're going to be making together with the ingredients. Every Saturday night I post a picture of the Nissan class so we can see our ingredients scaled out and the equipment. No excuse not to bake. Other than not looking at Instagram. Right. So we're just combining this. like making a sweet pastry or something like that, we're just rubbing our fat into our dry ingredients. And if you're using your hands, you're just going to keep going. This is what I want it to look like. So this is like pebbles.
Let's just less of thumbs up. Less of thumbs up. Right. So less of thumbs up. We are gonna crack a medium egg, so 50 grams of egg. Um, I prefer to crack on a flat surface, so just give it a tap on the kitchen counter and then get my egg in here. Just whisk it up if you want to. I forgot to say, but I think I put that on the post as well. If you um, want to, you can add a little bit of almond extract into this, probably just like a quarter teaspoon. Um, I don't love the fake flavor of it, so I'm not adding mine in, but if you're really into your almond, you can, you can do that. Otherwise, we're gonna get the egg in. So we're just gonna bring this together. Once it's been brought together with my egg, I'm gonna turn off my mixer. time if you're doing it by hand. Let's get everything off your paddle here. <laughs> Can we bring it over? Uh, can you see it? Mm, it's tough. I'll bring All it over. So this is the look of our mixture. Yeah? Let's give it a little stir to make sure that you don't have any streaks of anything in here, that everything is nice and combined. And we're gonna get this into the tin. So this is more like a biscuit base than like a Victoria sponge base. So basically I don't expect this to like, like expand a lot, but I want it to be nice. Someone wants you to slow down just a little bit. Slow down. I'm slowing down. Um, yeah, just to say it's not going to be a nice fluffy cake, it's more like an almondy biscuity base. Don't worry, I'll slow down now because it's a little bit tricky. Getting this spread into my tomb. I'll bring it over so you people can have a look as well. Okay, can you give it a spread? Yep, yeah, give it a bit of spread. Might grab a spoon and get it out actually. I wonder if anyone can hear us. Sometimes. I think we can. Thumbs up if you can hear us. Yeah. <laughs> From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sunday Get less thumbs up to that. Yeah. Hi, Aspen. <laughs> you know who's on there? No. Momo? Hi, Momo. Alina? Hi, hi, hi. What 
do you need us? Nothing. Just to say hi. into your tin. Don't get frustrated. I know it is a bit frustrating because it's quite thick. But eventually it will come out like this. You've seen those shows but then they drop everything out. As much as that. What does the cameraman say? Works. Works. Proofs. Right. So once you spread it all out, it goes into your now preheated oven. I'm going to start by giving it 20 minutes. It might be 25, but basically you want the cake skewer to come out clean. Questions? Marshall, I can see you guys. Temperature of the cooker. 165 fan. If it's not fan? 175. Good question, Marshall. I just, I, no one asked that, I just... But now you confuse everyone who put it on fan. 165 fan. 175 non-fan. There we go. Right, guys, so we put it on 20 minutes. Oh, I put mine on 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to check it after 20 with my cake skewer. If it comes out clean, I'm going to take it out. If there's a bit of egg on it, a bit of batter on it, I'm leaving it in for another few minutes. Once it comes out of the oven, it needs to cool down a bit. So this is a two-part video today. Because uh, I'm not going to fill the silence for the next 30 minutes. No, it's Astrid. Uh, but when I see you again in half an hour, so we're going to put it, so let's say at 4 o'clock, because that's a bit easy, isn't it? So at 4 o'clock, we're going to be back. And for that, you need some chocolate. You don't need this much. You need 100 grams. 100 grams of chocolate, and we're going to melt that chocolate. I'm going to melt, <laughs> melt mine in a bain marie, which is a bowl suspended over some boiling water. Uh, if you have a microwave, you can melt it in a microwave. Lowest setting, just give it some burst in there and it will melt. Um, otherwise, you do it in a bain marie. I'm just going to show you before we log off. What I mean. If you're in London. If you're in London. Oh no, if you're in London. It's nice and warm again. Uh, so that's all I want. So chocolate on the bain marie, all microwave, strawberries washed, cream and mascarpone in your fridge. Questions, Marshall? Does that all make sense? Everyone in a good place? We don't know. See you at four. Oh, good. Good. So we'll be back at four o'clock and we'll finish off the cake. And we need to have the chocolate melted by four? Yeah. I mean, I probably start mine at two minutes before. Just before four. Just before four. Yeah. It's not a big deal if you it'll take us a few minutes to do. Right, guys. If you have any questions in the meantime, just put them in the comments.